given to Ms. Irina Bokova, the Director General of UNESCO. His Excellency Mr. Ilham Aliyev, President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, His Excellency Mr. Bubakar Keita, President of the Republic of Mali, uh, Her Excellency Vice President of Bulgaria, Ilyana Yotova, leaders, ministers, religious leaders, ambassadors, dear friends. I'm deeply honored to participate in this fourth World Forum on Intercultural Dialogue, and I vividly recalled listening to His Excellency President Aliyev of my participation in the previous very successful similar forum. And of course, my first gratitude goes to His Excellency President Ilham Aliyev for his long-standing leadership in promoting intercultural dialogue, so much needed today. This embodies also in the tireless engagement of the First Lady, Mrs. Mehriban Aliyeva, as UNESCO Goodwill Ambassador for Oral and Musical Traditions. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that this reflects Azerbaijan's long history, history of tradition, history of culture, of intercultural dialogue, of interreligious inter exchange, on the Silk Road as a center for scholarship, art, philosophy, and knowledge. We see this embodied in Baku's walled city, inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List, and Azerbaijan's rich intangible cultural heritage, including the ancient art of carpet weaving and the celebration of Nubrus, jointly inscribed on the UNESCO representative list. We need this leadership more than ever today. Across the world, we see conflicts tearing countries apart with civilians hit hardest. We see the rise of violent extremism and cultural cleansing. We see mosques, churches, and other temples destroyed and cultural diversity threatened. We see education under attack and children forced out of learning. We see freedom of expression threatened, journalists attacked. We see societies closing against perceived others minorities persecuted. We see the rise of ancient hatreds, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, racial discrimination, intolerance. In this context, as so convincingly just said by President Aliyev, we have no choice. We must remain true to the compass setting of human rights and dignity, and we must respond. Hard power today ladies and gentlemen, is not enough. We need the soft power, the soft power of education, of knowledge, of culture, communication, the sciences, to strengthen the values we share and recognize the destiny we hold in common. All cultures are different, but humanity is a single family, bound by respect for dignity and rights for all. This is our vision of the world. This is UNESCO's vision. We are rebuilding mosques and mausoleums in Timbuktu, Mr. President Keita. This is our vision. We are defending humanity's shared heritage as our commonwealth. This is also our vision. We are promoting new forms of global solidarity, of global citizenship. This is also our vision. For us, for UNESCO, peace must be founded upon the intellectual and moral solidarity of mankind, as is inscribed in our Constitution. Today, tolerance is not enough. Passive coexistence is insufficient. We need solidarity. We need understanding. We need respect for diversity as a source of confidence and belonging a wellspring for creativity and innovation. We need sharing. We need acceptance of the difference of the other. 
And you, Mr. President Aliyev, so convincingly just said, diversity is our everyday reality. We need new policies based on rights and democracy to make the most of its power for all. These goals guide all of our UNESCO's activities, and that is why we are so proud to be here with our partners, with intergovernmental organizations, with the Alliance of Civilization, with ESESCO, with so many other partners that are here, and we, the United Nations system, I'm mentioning the Food and Agricultural Organization, the World Tourist Organization, and the wide range of non-governmental organizations and private sector actors. These goals underpin the international standards UNESCO is upholding for the safeguarding and promoting of cultural heritage and cultural diversity. They guide our leadership of the international decade for the rapprochement of cultures until the year 2022 to promote interreligious and intercultural dialogue, understanding and cooperation for peace. And this is why we are so proud that we, a few months ago, finalized a tremendous work done by more than 100 scholars to publish the first ever history of Islam with the six volumes on Islam and philosophy, Islam and sciences, Islam and culture, the foundation of Islam. And this is also our response for interreligious and intercultural dialogue. And the, these actions inspire our work to prevent violent extremism through global citizenship education, through resources to support teachers in promoting peace in classrooms, through support to the internet as a force for dialogue and human rights, to prevent the radicalization of young women and men, to bolster media literacy. This is our work also to teach and educate in Holocaust and to prevent future genocides in the world. And I believe this echoes the determination of the Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez to lead what he called a surge in the diplomacy of peace. In his words, and I quote the Secretary General, we need a global response that addresses the root causes of conflict and integrates peace, sustainable development and human rights in a holistic way, from conception to execution. Mesdames et Messieurs, la construction de la paix passe nécessairement aujourd'hui par un effort nouveau pour l'éducation, la connaissance, le dialogue des cultures. C'est le cœur du mandat de l'UNESCO et c'est pourquoi nous travaillons à renforcer les capacités des éducateurs dans beaucoup de pays, en Albanie, en Bosnie-Herzégovine, au Kazakhstan, en Serbie, au Kyrgyzstan, au Tadjikistan et en Ouzbékistan. Nous menons le même travail en Afrique de l'Ouest avec l'Organisation internationale de la francophonie. Nous soutenons l'éducation pour la prévention de l'extrémisme violent au Maroc, au Maroc, en Mauritanie, au Sénégal. Et c'est la raison, comme je, je viens d'évoquer, pour laquelle l'UNESCO lutte dans le monde entier pour l'éducation à l'Holocauste. Nous devons enseigner cette histoire pour ne jamais oublier, pour lutter aujourd'hui contre le racisme et la haine et pour éviter de nouveaux génocides demain. Protéger la culture, mesdames et messieurs, va bien au-delà de la préservation des bâtiments et des pierres. Protéger la culture, c'est parler de valeurs, défendre des principes, soigner des identités, nourrir un sentiment d'appartenance et ce que les peuples et les citoyens ont de plus cher. Il s'agit de fortifier le dialogue, la compréhension et la paix. C'est le message de la résolution historique du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies, adopté le 24 mars sur la protection du patrimoine culturel en cas de conflit. Et je crois aussi que c'est le message du processus de Bakou. La diversité culturelle, ce n'est pas une menace, c'est une chance, c'est une force pour les sociétés, une source de résilience, d'adaptation et je dirais même de fierté. 
C'est l'esprit même de l'humanisme qui s'appuie sur cette sagesse ancestrale de la poétesse Azeri, Marsati Ganjavi, dont le 900e anniversaire a été célébré par l'UNESCO en 2013. Et je la cite. « Quand je me suis dépassé, le chemin s'est finalement ouvert à moi. Ce chemin est devant nous, mesdames et messieurs. Il conduit vers les autres pour dialoguer. C'est l'essence même de notre recherche commune de la paix. Je vous remercie et je vous souhaite une très bonne conférence. »